You know what this game could have done with? A Kraken. Just think what that would have looked like on the board. You know, I was actually set to play a completely different game today, but, um, well, I, I was looking through my ST games recently, and I suddenly came across this one, and, uh, I sort of realised that when I, when this was released, I, well, I was only born in 1983, and, um, I, I don't ever remember completing it, and so I thought, well, the 30 year old version of me, um, or 31 now, um, could probably do with, um, you know, actually getting this one off his belt, so I'm gonna, I'm playing it now. And, uh, yeah, so don't blame me if I, um, don't know some of the answers to these questions. I did have a practice run before this and I did complete it, so I'm gonna give it another go now, as I'm gonna answer these questions as I'm talking. Um, yeah, really badly, it would seem. So, what is this? This is a power play game of the gods. It's kind of a console board game from 1987, made by Arcana. There were also versions for it for the Amiga and Commodore 64. I believe the Amiga one's got the more fancier graphics than this. Um, it's only recently I realised this, this was actually a fully box release when I noticed a copy of it on eBay. Apparently it came on two discs originally. I say this because this version that I'm playing here, which you probably guessed from the um the opening, that this is from a cover disc of ST Review magazine. Sorry, I'm just um, I'm just <laughs> I, I I'm kind of playing at the same time, so um, I, I haven't I have to stop and um, look and see what the heck I'm heck I'm doing. So anyway, yes, this was originally packaged on um, ST Review Magazine, and it, the ST Review Magazine only comes on one floppy. So maybe that's the reason why it came with the generic ti black, black title screen, because they had to cut it in order to preserve disk space. It, it would be kind of interesting to see what the difference between the one to two disk versions are, though, because um, I have no idea. I just I've assumed this was the only version of the game that there ever was. So, what is this? Well, the gameplay is like a version of chess, with each player having four players with four warriors with the idea to be the last god standing. And last god standing is the one with no pieces left. And you can see my pieces down the bottom, and the rivals are up the top. On each move, you're going to have an, a chance to move your warrior by answering a random question. Um, depending on the... depending on the boards the board colours here, but it doesn't seem to um, match up to what the titles say. Sometimes it's, it says sports and then it would come up with a literature question, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, the quicker you get the question right, the more points that you would score. When your character has re reached around about the 25 points mark like this um, caveman is about to... Can I do it now? Can I do it? Yes, this is it. Perfect. Yep, you can see that, he's just turned into an atlas. And he's, um, he will gain um, a little bit of strength. Um, so yeah, all, all the, the characters can mutate into mythical beasts. The caveman goes into the atlas, which you just saw. And then a cyclops, before becoming the strongest opponent in the game, and forming the minotaur, which is that, that creature jumping around at the, at the top. So generally you want to avoid him. Um, you do this not only to make the character stronger during the one-to-one -one death challenges, which admittedly I've not shown you yet, which I'll get to in a minute, and it also essentially gives them a free life. If they die as a mutation, then they essentially revert back to their previous state rather than just disappearing off the board. Um, so you want to protect... So generally at this stage I would want to protect the three who aren't mutated. Particularly as... um. My opponent, the CPU opponent, seems to always start with mutated characters. In the, these these four opponents are all um, mutated. They're about three times mutated. So I'm going to have to kill them about three or four times in order to get them off the board. 
The angel is the um, the weakest one, so hence why I'm going towards that one first. Hopefully I can do this so I can get to the challenge map. Ugh, oh, jeez. Well, it's going a lot better than um it's going a lot better than what I um did as a kid, but still. Um anyway, the challenge maps if I ever get there. Oh, I know that one. Yay. Come on. Let's go to challenge. Challenge. I can explain the challenge maps. Ah, here we go. So challenging opponents happens when the rival opponents are facing each other, and thus you are, you are teleported to a different stage where you have to answer more trivia questions over over many different arenas, such as molten lava pits under the gauge of the Gorgon, which you can see right here, or pushing a heavy stone on a high mountain. The loser ends up getting a gruesome death, or demutation, as in this case. And there we go. Aphrodite, as in me, has won. And he's now going to get... de-evolved into something else. I don't have no idea what that is. Uh, these challenge sequences all are entertaining aren't exactly perfect. If you're playing against a computer like me, and if you try and... And, if I, and as you can see just then, I challenged the Atlas with a strength of 15 against the angel like Iris, which um, had a strength of 12. Um, in order to beat that battle, I literally just had to sit back and refuse to answer any of the qu challenge questions. If you do this, because you are the strongest character, you automatically win the question, and three unresponded questions later, and you've instantly won the battle. It only becomes a problem when you have to actually deal with the Minotaur, because there's nothing stronger than the Minotaur. He's 25 strength is the strongest you're going to get. So you have to actually beat him fair and square. But literally the other enemies on here, if I, if I challenge up the caveman up to a, up to a Minotaur, he will instantly just walk out all over the other, the other, um, the other fighters. It's also not the largest database of questions in the world. After, uh, I mean, this is my second playthrough, and I do start seeing the same questions over and over again, sometimes in quick succession. Which makes repeated playthroughs somewhat pointless if you can remember the answers. But overall, the game is fairly play fairly enjoyable, but um, it's not a classic by any sense. Um, but, you know, it was a cover disc. And um, therefore didn't cost anything, so, you know, I, I do recommend you at least give it a go. At least once in your life. And, um, well, I'm going to shut up now and try and, to, um, try and complete this game. And, um... Oh, that'd be Henry VIII. I'm going to try and complete this game and, um, you know, try and do it with all my characters on the board. No, gen you know, just for that... Just for once, I can actually, um, get this chalked off my to complete list. Everybody has one and um, mine's incredibly large.
Okay. This time. 